What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April and you guys already know it's Wednesday. It is Real Talk Wednesday and I'm going to tell you it is Tuesday really really late. It's basically 11.41 p.m. And normally I do these during the daytime so that I can have them edited and uploaded but so I will be up really late. So by the time you guys get this you know I'll be sleeping. But anyway, so yes, I hope you guys had a great Christmas holiday. As for me, I had a great time with my kids and my boyfriend. Um, we had a really great, um, and my grandson, oh my God, yes. That was his first Christmas, so I had a, I had like a really blast with him. I just really, like, I am in love with that little baby. He will be one um, this Saturday, so yeah, time flies really, really quick, and I can't believe he's about to be one. But anyway, so the hair that I'm rocking is from an Ally Express vendor. Um, the video isn't up yet. Um, I don't even remember what vendor this is, to be honest. Oh, yes, I do. Um, so if you're interested, I'll post the information for it below. Um, I just finished and styled the video um, tonight, so it probably won't be up for a couple of weeks. But anyway, so if you want a, I also do uh, make wigs. So if you want a custom closure wig or you want an in stock or a video unit um, or what have you, you can always check out my website, goingwiththewindwigs.webly.com. As well as that, I'll post it in the information box for you girls below. And also, if you want a real talk episode about your life situation, then you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. And please make sure to put in the subject line real talk so that I know that it is an official business or just basically an official email as well as that as if you want to change the names in your video or your email rather such as if your name is Tanya you want to be called Kelsey to, just let me know that you're changing the names of your characters in the email so that way I don't have to think of a name so other than that let's get on to real talk Okay, so both of these are really long, so I'm not even going to be able to do three, but whatever, you know, we're going to end this new year, this old year, and bring in the new year with two really, really long good ones, as they all are good. Hey April, I've changed the names. About a year ago, I was pregnant with a boy because, let's face it, his ass is not a man. We are the same age, 25, and at that time, I was not aware of really anything about him besides that maybe he had a daughter. But me being stupid, I never asked him about it due to the fact that most of his friends were shit talkers and no one ever knew the truth. And from my standpoint, he hadn't lied to me. After two months of being together and he was always nice and would take me out to eat, would text and call me, never had a problem with him. And he always said, oh, I love you, blah, blah. I found out I was pregnant and I wasn't sure what to do. I had decided whatever he says, I will keep the baby. At the time, I was working overnight in a computer call center, and as soon as I got out, I was going to head over and tell him. I had written down and practiced what I was going to say and blah, blah. When I got there, he was kind of in his own little world and really didn't pay attention. I told him to really listen to me because I had something really important to say. He started laughing, and when I told him that I was pregnant, he continued to laugh like it was a joke. He didn't say anything, nothing. So I told him he didn't have to tell me anything that in the morning he could tell me. In the morning he had texted me that he wasn't ready to be a dad and that he didn't picture having kids this way and that he wasn't ready to have responsibilities and that I should get an abortion. Of course I cried but I told him I didn't care what he had to say. Whether he wanted to be there or not I would still have my son. After five months of not talking to him he sent me a message with that I miss you shit. I was mad and answered in anger and of course we talked me into seeing him. I saw him, we ended up having sex and this continued after a couple of months until he came with the same shit getting an abortion. After that, I never spoke to him again until the day I was giving birth. I told him, hey, I'm at the hospital about to give birth, do you want to come? He texted right away and said if he could come, he would, but he was in Tampa at a football practice. I told him okay and didn't say anything. He kept texting, saying to send pictures of me and the baby, and I did. After two weeks of him saying he would come see the baby, he never did. Never bought him a pack of diapers, nothing. So about a month later, my girl runs into him at her job and confronts and calls him out and tells him he's a shitty ass person and that he shouldn't be allowed to have kids if he didn't take care of them. By this time, she had found out he had two other kids that he never met. 
he calls me right away and tells me I shouldn't tell people to talk bad about him and all this shit. And of course, couldn't hold my mouth and let him out. I, uh, all this shit. Of course, I couldn't hold my mouth and let it out on him. He claims he wants to see us and we set up a date and time so he can meet his son. After the date, he started to come to doctor visits and help me out with the baby. He started to get involved, but after a while, he just started to focus more about me than our son. And he still didn't even buy him anything, nor did he ever ask if his son needed anything. I see now how naive I was. I had to also ask him if he had other kids. And he said yes and made, some, and made up some story of how he never met them and that it wasn't his fault, but there's this and that. This whole time, the other moms had added me on Facebook, and I never knew. I had no idea it was them. I sent one of them a message, and she told me what happened and how he never met his other son and that she found out about me through child support, and they both added me. It's been over 11 months since I've seen or heard from him. About a month ago, I started receiving child support money, but it's barely enough to buy diapers or a shirt. I was debating whether or not to take him off child support because I didn't want him to ever see his son. He doesn't even have his last name. My son has mine. I even asked him to sign papers that would take his paternal rights away so he would never have to see him or, nor pay anything. He said no. He moved two minutes away from me this year before my son's birthday and I cried because I know it's a walking distance. And even if he didn't want to see me or my family, he could have at least left a birthday card in the mailbox. That's it. I could care less about myself or my feelings, but I wouldn't want my son growing up with false hopes of a father who makes empty promises and will never be there for him. What could I do? Wow. Well, jeez. She said she changed the names, but there were no names in it. So we're just going to call her Chelsea, and we'll call her baby father, Tom. So that was a pretty long one. You know what I'm saying? And pretty detailed. Very good email. Chelsea, first of all, let me tell you something. You are not the first, and you're never going to be the last of a baby father, a deadbeat baby father who never seen their kids, don't do shit for their kids, don't want to be bothered with their kids, just don't care. You're not going to be the last. So first of all, let's not beat yourself up about it. Don't beat yourself up about it because the one person who's going to be missing out on everything in your child's life is Tom's dumbass. Okay, so he got two other kids. What does he do? What did he just go run around, be a sperm donor, donor, and then go in hiding? Like, you know what I'm saying? He's like MIA. I don't really understand. Like, this is my thing. I don't really understand how men or people can make a baby and not even want to see their child. It could be the same for a female. She could have a baby and be fucked up or... Just don't want to be bothered with it. Gives it to one of her relatives to take care of. Or just leaves it with the baby father. And just never comes back. That's happened too. But my thing is this. I really don't understand how you could have a kid. And so what if you don't want to be with your baby mother? So what? How could you just not want to know? How is my child doing? Do you want to make sure? Do you want to know that your child is not hungry? You know what I'm saying? Not starving, not going without electricity, running water, homeless. Wouldn't you want to know? Like, I would want to know. I would I would not become an MIA parent, okay? MIA father, an MIA mother. That is just, like, ridiculous. Like, just your self-conscious and just you being a human being, you should just want to know that your child is okay. Even if you're not able to spend as much time or be able to see the child as often as you would like or even want, okay? You would still want to know and make sure that your child still is okay. You may not be able to provide A1 sauce, but I'm pretty sure the store brand will work just as well, okay? You know what I'm saying? So, here's the thing. First of all, Chelsea... Tom is a fucking asshole because he has three kids. And you know what? 
He might have more than that. You just don't fucking know it. Okay? These this there might be two others who just ain't go to child support and don't even give a fuck about anything to do with him or child support. So he may have more than three. You know what I'm saying? Me thinking the way he's acting, he probably does. But here's the thing. It's fucked up situation. And of course everybody wants their child or their children to have both parents, even if both parents are not together. But, you know what I'm saying? They want the other child to be able to enjoy their other parent's life with them. Enjoy their company. Have memories. Have another nurturing parent that cares besides just mommy or just daddy. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants that for their kids. And there might be some that don't even give a fuck. Those who just be like, well, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't, mm -mm, not me, girl, please. I just have a baby. I don't need him. There are some people like that who just don't want to have a co-parenting relationship or a relationship at all with the baby father. They're just fine with just taking care of the kid themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that either. However, even if you're not with your baby mother or you don't want to have a relationship, you owe it to the child to be there to in their lives. Because they didn't fucking ask to be here. And we all know this shit. You did not ask or he or she crying baby did not ask to be here so it is your duty your responsibility to be a man and take care of your kids okay you don't have to be rich you don't have to be Rockefeller just do what you're supposed to do as a human fucking being okay now as far as child support and you're not even hardly getting anything i'm uh, not a nut to buy diapers let me tell you something about that i have been there okay been there and i think that's why me and my daughter tati my my oldest daughter tati who's my tinky's mother you know my grandson's mother um i guess that's why her and i get along so so well because her father is a deadbeat. And even though she's older now, she's 20, it's still, you know, you, I can still go back and think about it. And so can she. We used to get, um, for her, child support would be $6.75 every two weeks. Yeah. And they would put it on a check and send it to me. It was like just enough. It was enough to buy a Happy Meal. And I might have probably got a small fry, but... It wasn't not enough to buy a bag of diapers, that's for sure. And as time went on, you know what I'm saying, they started going with non-checks. And, you know, if you got child support or what have you, you got a credit card, like a debit card, whatever. Okay? So I got one sent to me. And I would call. It started charging 25 cents, if you would call. Got one sent to me, and I called, like, four times. There wasn't nothing on that card. And I was in debt of 50 cents for for the other two calls. Because the first two calls of inquiring about your child support is free. The next ones thereafter are charged. This is how it started out first, but it stopped. they've been stopped doing that. Anyway, so after like three months of having that empty card in my wallet, I finally decided as I was driving down the freeway to check it out the window. Okay? And that's what I did. So I checked it out the window, okay, about in 2013, before I moved here. Now, this was a long time ago, but in 2013, I got a call from judge talking about why am I not in family court? I'm sitting at home making a wig and working for um, Amazon. I basically didn't know anything about this. They sent it to an old address that I had. He was trying to get child support modifications. And kind of find out, I was like, I don't even get child support. Why would you be modifying things? Kind of find out, I had money on that little card. I did not know of. So I had to get another one. And it was about 500 and some dollars on this card. Now, mind you, this is the funny part, okay? This is going to be the funny part to you girls. You're probably like, wow, 500 and some dollars. Hmm. Now, this is 2013. I chucked out that card out of my window like in 2010, or excuse me, 2000 and like 2009, something like that. Yeah, well, probably before that, like around 2007 when Mumsy was a baby. Chucked it out the window. So it's 2013. 
Now, I don't know when I got the child support. I don't know when it restarted, but there was five hundred seven dollars on there. However, my child support payments were not what you think they were. They were sixteen dollars, sixteen dollars and thirty two cents every two weeks. So could you imagine how long it took oh, five hundred some dollars to accumulate if I was getting like thirty something dollars a month? What the fuck? Okay. Um but you're going to court to get modifications. Modifications to what? What you trying to get me? Fucking smoke? Nothing? Bowls and whistles? Dollar store shit? Because my God. This is what I'm talking about. He don't want to pay child support. And you don't want to even bother with it anymore. Let me tell you something. Chelsea. You ain't got to bother with it. It's the fact that you just want to annoy him. And make him do it still. Because this is what I'm telling you, what you want to do. Meaning, this is what you should do. Okay? Yeah, that's that money that you get is not enough. And I'm pretty sure it pisses him off to pay it. Getting it taken and garnished out of his check or what have you. But continue to do that to him. Why should he get away scot-free because he doesn't want to be a good parent? Regardless of how much it is, make his ass continue to pay for it. And the more money he makes at an employer is the more maybe you'll get. And over time, go back and take him to court and get more for your child because it's so unfair to single parents to have to be a single parent and not have to get and not get help from the other parent you know what i'm saying it's one thing to be a single parent but when you are a single parent that ain't getting no type of child support any type of support from the other parent then that is a really fucked up place to be and trust me i know the feeling don't let his ass off scot-free shit please that nigga would be paying fucking child support to the day he died i wouldn't give a fuck if my kid was 50 years old you still paying child support that's right you're gonna still keep paying it too nigga fuck that okay i'm sorry but man or woman if you ain't living with your kids your little kids is with the other parent and you ain't paying child support you need to get off your fucking asses because it ain't a male thing. It ain't a female thing. It's a both a together thing. You know what I'm saying? You are supposed to raise your kids together. Regardless, if y'all ate together like this, you still raise them together. Co-parent. That's the big word nowadays. Co-parenting. Like, it's like a big freaking holy word. But co-parent together. And be civilized. You know what I'm saying? But, Chelsea, if he doesn't want to be bothered with your baby, don't force yourself onto him. Don't force your son onto him. Don't call and stalk and ask him, why don't you want to be in your child's life? Why aren't you doing this? Why don't you come visit? Why don't you do this don't do it you know what i'm saying do not do it because it's his loss not yours you shouldn't have to force your child onto anybody you should not have to force your children yourself onto no one this was my thing okay child support i never took my daughter's father to court for child support i got it because his other baby mother took him so you know what i'm saying however my thing is like this if i gotta bring your ass to court money and this is just how i feel but being that you've already got this established chelsea i would say continue getting your child support him from him however me personally i ain't about to take your ass to court for no fucking money to take care of your kids because if i gotta go through all of that shit of going through the courts to get money out of you to take care of your own fucking kids then i don't want shit from you if that means i have to go and force your hand to take care of Force your motherfucking hand to take care of your kids. Then you're a deadbeat and you ain't worth shit. And I wouldn't even want you to be in my kid's life. Because you're worthless. And if I have to do all of that, you're not even worth it. You're not worth my time. And you're damn sure not worth being around my children. So that's why I don't even bother taking my ex-husband to court for child support. He has not done anything. Not sent anything in a few years for them. And didn't even bother calling for this past Christmas. But who even gives a shit? Okay, we don't even fucking care. However, my thing, that's how I feel about child support. Because I shouldn't have to force your hand at doing anything for your own flesh and blood. You know what I'm saying? So, however, Chelsea, you've already had this established. That baby's already receiving child support regardless of how it is. Make his ass continue to pay. Because if he wants to be a jerk and an asshole, then continue to take the money out of his fucking dumb ass pockets. And let him continue to be a jerk and an asshole. And eventually, eventually, hopefully, he'll get... He'll get it and realize these are his children and he needs to spend time with them. Other than that, I wouldn't waste a breath on him and I wouldn't even bother. 
and that's just my opinion so you ladies can let Chelsea know exactly how you feel as well okay so here is the next one okay dear April this is going to be a long email you can call me Cynthia and my husband Jason I have been married to Jason for nine years soon to be ten in April of next year our marriage started off very rocky we were both in the military and that's how we met and at that time I already had two sons before I met my husband I was a single parent while both of us deployed together and about six months went by into our deployment and I got pregnant with our daughter I had to be sent back stateside so we both decided that I should get out of the military to take care of our daughter while he stayed in and planned to do 20 years and then retire. Well, let's just say that that didn't go as planned, but I will tell you more about that later on in this email. Jason reluctantly called his mom to tell her that she would be a grandma and that we had plans to get married. Eventually, uh, we would have plans to get married eventually. Well, his mother had doubts if the baby was actually his, but he quickly shut that down and told her he knows the baby's his. She told him that she does not agree with the marriage and just because you have a baby with someone does not mean you have to marry them. Hmm. He told her that we already had plans to marry even before I was pregnant. She didn't care and hung the phone up. Well, she called me and told me that she doesn't want me marrying her son and that we don't have her or her husband's blessings. She asked could she have my daughter and raise her as her own. I told her no and had enough and hung up on her ass. All she did was fuel us to get married even sooner than we planned to. Jason came home on R&R &R and went straight to the courthouse and tied the knot. And we tied the knot. By the way, my parents knew about everything and gave us their blessings. And we were very supportive and were very supportive about the whole thing. Jason called his mother about a week after us being married to tell her of the news. Oh God, April. Shit just got really real. Over the entire course of our marriage, she has done everything to ruin our marriage. She would call him and nag him over stupid stuff. She would come to our house and do little sly things to try to undermine me. She would um, critique me on my weight gain when I was pregnant with both of his daughters and tell me I wasn't big enough and that she was and that, that excuse me, she would tell me I wasn't big enough and that she wants her grandkids to be healthy. This type of treatment went on up until two years ago when I decided I had had enough. This woman wanted to keep the kids for a week initially, but when she got to the house, she tried to add on another week. I told her she was only getting them for a week. She goes on to tell me that Jason told her she could get them for two weeks. I told her no, just a week. She got all pissy and said she doesn't want them at all, which I was perfectly fine with. So I'm in the kitchen. Meanwhile, this heifer is telling my kids to put their shoes on and get their bags because it's time to go. I said, oh, you still taking them? She said, yes, and I said, for a week, right? She said, no, two weeks. April girl, I had enough of her and her mess. I started yelling at her and letting her know everything I felt about her. Mind you, I did not curse at her. I just told her about herself. Did you know she started hitting me and trying to put her hands on me in front of my kids? She cursed me out and scratched my face. Her husband broke it up and my husband while and my husband was at work at the time. I kicked them both out of my house. My poor kids were all crying. I called my husband at work to tell him what just transpired. He could not believe it and apologized for what his mom did to me. To make a long story short, me or my kids do not deal with his mom anymore. Not to this day. Well that situation was one of the many obstacles I faced in my marriage. My husband has a big spending problem and does not care if we are broke after all the bills are paid. I can't live like that and try to teach him better and, and try to I can't live like that and try to teach him better ways to spend his money, but he does not listen to me. We used to own a home together, but that home got foreclosed. We bought our first car together, but that car but that car got repossessed. My husband got medically chaptered out of the military and for two years could not find a job. We have been through two separations, both initiated by him, because he said he wasn't happy with me. I had issues with him and his exes, him sneaking and talking to them behind my back and trust issues. I don't even talk to his family because of the beef between me and his mom. I stayed with this man through everything, and he doesn't even pay attention to me. He's constantly on his social media liking other females' pictures, telling them how beautiful they are, but won't even tell me anything. Within the past year and a half, we have both... We have both our, within the past year, 
and a half. We both are in college obtaining our bachelor's, our bachelor's degrees. But here lately, I've been noticing nobody really be checking for him like they used to. I've also been noticing every time we go out, guys are checking me out everywhere we go, which is starting to piss him the hell off because they don't care if he's there or not. Mind you, I'm 32 and always dressed like ladylike, but, but have put on a little weight, which has been going in all the right places. I guess what I want to know is, should I stay and make this marriage work and hope he changes one day, or should I go elsewhere? Well, now that was a good one. Okay, so that was good. Um, I love the whole way she explained everything. I felt like, wow. So Cynthia and Jason have been together for nine years, soon to be ten. And she's had um, two children with him, okay? She, but she's already had two sons before they met. And she's given him two more children after that. Um... They're in the military together, and on top of that, his mother is a fucking crazy bitch. Reminds me of my ex-mother-in-law. Totally reminds me of her. The same situation. She came to my goddamn door and fucking put the paws on me, or tried to. She tried to put her paws on me, and I had to fuck her up on my porch. But that's neither here nor there. So, here's the thing. First of all... Cynthia's mother-in-law never wanted her to be her daughter-in-law from the jump. She didn't want them getting married. She didn't even want her to have the baby at first. Because she just didn't want them to be together. But then she wants to take the first baby and not give her back. Just basically raise her as her own. And it always is talking shit. Just basically always talking shit. Okay? First of all... I think with some in-laws, they really need to know their place and mind their own goddamn fucking business, okay? I can totally relate to Cynthia's whole situation. However, her mother-in-law came to her home and tried to take the kids for two weeks when she already told that fucking lady it's going to be one week. Now, mind you, Cynthia is the mother. How dare this old bitter bitch come over there? And try to tell somebody she's taking it for two weeks. And when she get told like it is. And how she really is. And Cynthia got in that ass and lit that ass aflame. Did this old bitter bitch get fucking mad and scratch this lady face up? In front of her grandchildren? What the fuck? Cynthia good because. Baby. Had you fucking scratched my goddamn face up or even got up in my fucking face or told me you was taking my kids for two weeks. First things first, if you didn't agree to what I said and you kept on and you got an attitude and you said you wasn't taking them then, I would say, well, okay, then you can leave because I already know you got an attitude because you already said you're not taking them since I told you one week so you don't want them at all now. That's You're saying that because you got an attitude and if you got a fucking attitude, the best thing for you to do is leave my fucking surroundings, my territory, my home, my property. Get your fucking ass up, your old bitter bitch, and get the fuck out. Goodbye. I would have said to her, all right, well, that's fine. You don't have to take them. However, I'm really busy right now, so I think it's best that you leave. That's a nice way of putting it. You know what I'm saying? Instead of saying, get the fuck out, that's the nicer way. I think it's time for you to leave because I have a lot of things to do, and right now is not a good time. Okay? That's as polite as it can get. Because you, you can't really get too polite. Because that's just being fake and phony. However, you didn't do that. But, did the old bitch fucking scratch her face up in front of her grandchildren? In front of Cynthia's kids? I'm sorry, but I would have lost it. And I wouldn't have gave a fuck who mother it was. Because I'm somebody mother standing here in front of my two kids. Maybe all four of them because she does have four. However, I'm standing there in front of my kids. And you are fucking verbally and physically attacking me in my motherfucking home. So, I would have lost... All of this, and I would have probably whipped that old lady's fucking ass and not even thought twice about it. How dare she come into that home and carry on like a fucking monster or old battle out of hell, okay? A battle out of hell is just how she fucking acted. You would never see my kids again, and that's the same scenario with me and my ex-mother-in-law. Same thing, I was pregnant with Mumsy, and she came over to my home and did the same shit, okay? 
I don't allow them to contact me or my kids because I don't need the drama. And they're just fucking troublemakers anyway, so I'll just prefer not to be bothered. However, that's the one thing, okay, that ruined my marriage. And it seems like it's ruining Cynthia's marriage just the same. Now, the next thing is her husband, he don't give a fuck if they broke. He will pay the bills and spend up all the money on bullshit, okay, on gambling and dumb shit and just don't care. Nobody likes to live paycheck to paycheck. I just really don't think that's cool because you never know what type of emergency or situation is going to come up. So when she's trying to teach him the right ways to live and he don't give a fuck, nor is he even complimenting her or even noticing her or giving her any bit of attention. But you can take your fucking ass on social media and fucking like all types of pictures by other bitches that you don't even know, random bitches that don't even give a fuck about you. And like Cynthia said, ain't checking for your ass. But you can do that. Let me tell you something. And he's already been sneaky with his exes, like sneaking and talking to them and shit. Let me tell you something. If you bored with his ass and he ain't manning up and this has been going on and y'all done already had two legal separations and then got back together and these legal separations was brought on by his ass, bitch, you better fucking go, okay? It's about to be 2016. Start your new year off in a blast and with a fucking blast and not with something from the fucking past, okay? Yes, we like to stay in a love. We like to stay in a relationship, in a marriage. Who don't want to stay with the person that they with forever? Because that's what we see it as. Because if we did not think that we was going to be with that person forever, we would have never married their trifling ass from the jump, from the gate. So everybody wants to be in love forever. Everybody wants to be with that special person forever because that's how they feel. Unfortunately, it don't work out like that because sometimes that person ends up showing their true sides and then you know that they're a real fucking asshole and you can't tolerate them. So I totally fucking get it, okay? However, don't sit around marinating in the shit. He's a jerk and his mother is a fucking old battle act bitter bitch and he's a fucking jerk. Just a total, nonchalant, fucking boring ass jerk. Let him twiddle his phone and like pictures like you said. Nobody's checking for you. However, Cynthia, for those who are checking for you, make sure that you don't just jump into something so quick because you are going to be getting out of a relationship. Don't jump into something so quick because you're feeling the vibe. you feeling you feeling good because... He checking you out or he telling you things. You know, I'm talking about the next man. He telling you sweet nothings. He telling you, oh, boo, um, you know, y'all all booed up or whatever. Don't be so quick, though, to jump in a relationship and just give your all. all. When I say this is because sometimes we can be like an open book, especially when we've come out of a relationship and we've met someone that we really like. We sometimes tend to spill the beans a little bit too much which makes us very vulnerable and acceptable to shit that we don't need to be acceptable and vulnerable to, which is a dumb motherfucking Negro or a dumb motherfucking bitch who is not really there for you, but is there to get whatever they can from you, okay? Their agenda is not what's on your agenda because you're at this moment vulnerable and you've been through shit and your guard may be somewhat a little bit down when you've encountered what you think is Mr. Right. So, take your time in a relationship if you decide to leave Jason's dumb ass. Me personally, his family is enough to, to just decide to just like, hey, I'm going to bury the hatchet right now and I'm going to go, I'm going to get my shit or you can get your shit and get the fuck out because me and my four kids are going to be here. You go about your business, but I'm going to just bury the hatchet with you and your family right now and go about my business. It's 2016. Don't nobody want to be sitting around with somebody that they fucking miserable with because they in the relationship and you you already fucking tried to make it work, the marriage, twice. I don't really know how many times you can try. People say it's death to its part, death to its part, or whatever. Marriage. Yeah, that saying has been going and out the fucking door a long time ago, okay? Till death do us part? No, bitches. It's not till death do us part anymore. That shit has been gone. Times have changed. So, nigga, if you acting the fuck up and don't know how to act and your family is acting the fuck up and don't know how to act, there is no reason for April to stick the fuck around. I am not about to be dealing with no foolishness, no fucking bitterness, no fuckery, no nonsense, no nothing, okay? I'm just saying. I'm not about to be miserable 
for a lifetime. So, Cynthia, you want happiness. And if you ain't feeling him like that no more, and you know that there's really no need in patching things up, and you don't see anything in the future with him, then maybe it's time to be happy for Cynthia and heal yourself. Because for what? You're going to sit there with a dust mop? Because that's what he is, a dust mop. He's just sitting there collecting dust on social media, doing the same dumb shit, which is nothing. Not even realizing that he has a woman that somebody else is checking out. Oh, he realizes that now. But you know what? Some things are just too late when it's noticed. Some things are too... It's just too late to fix certain things. And... Like I said, as much as we all want to be in a relationship and stay in love with that person, shit don't work out like that all the time. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, on that note, that was the end of the videos. I hope you guys have a great 2016. Happy New Year. Happy fucking New Year to all of you girls out there. Um, as well as leave your comments below for our two emailers. Um, I forgot their name. Cynthia and... Uh, I forgot the first one's name. But anyway, yes. So on that note, have a good 2016. Stay diva and divolicious. And I'll see you girls next year.